My name is Wally Olapade. I am not a former anything, okay? So um, basically, I'm just a regular individual guy who started trading, took a lot of courses, learned a lot of stuff, uh, made a lot of mistakes, and um, I came to the point where I started perfecting what I do. So um, like he said earlier, I'm not a former Wall Street guy. I'm not a former stockbroker. I'm not a former market maker. Uh, not a former stock analyst, floor trader, none of that stuff. I don't hold any designation as a CMT or anything like that. All I am is just a regular person like you. And I hope that I can shed some light as to like the things that I learned um, and things that are working for me and the things that are working for my students. Okay? So with that, um, let me use this quote real quick uh, by Benjamin Franklin. He says, tell me and I forget. And then if you teach me, I may remember. But if you involve me, I learn. So today, I want to do just that. Okay, I'm going to get you guys involved in this. Okay, And so uh, the first thing I want to do is I want you guys to take a pen and paper and write down, if you were to place a trade, what would be the minimum profit you would expect out of it? Minimum. Okay, That you feel good about. You'd be able to go home, sleep well, and be excited about it. What would be that minimum for you? Okay. All right. Now, the next question, how long are you willing to hold on to that trade for? Maximum. What's the longest period of time you're willing to hold on to that trade for the profit, the minimum profit that you will feel good about? Okay? I want you guys to keep that in mind as we go through this presentation and see whether this strategy really helps. Now, I mentioned the fact that this is a strategy, so um, there's a lot of details that I will not be covering for lack of time. Uh, but, you know, I'll give you guys an opportunity to learn more about it and, you know, uh, workshops that we have so that you guys can learn, um, you know, more details about what we do. Okay, but today my biggest goal is I just want you guys to see this strategy that has been so effective for us and see that, you know, is this something that you are interested in and is something that you would like to learn, all right? So let's get started. The reason why we call our company Right Side Trading is this. Um, like I said, when I was learning how to trade, one of my biggest frustrations was the fact that, you know, everything that was being shown was always on the left side of the chart, meaning everything was in hindsight. But when I wanted to go out there and trade in real life, um, I had to figure out what was going to happen the next day. I had to figure out what was going to happen on the right-hand side of the chart. So hence we came up with the name Right Side Trading, okay? And so I want to kind of give you guys an example real quick. Here's a chart, and this is what I want you guys to do, if you guys can bear with me and indulge me for a second. What I want you guys to do is look at this chart right now, okay? And we are looking at this chart on this day right here, this red candle right here. If you are looking at this chart, it doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't matter what company it is, just looking at this chart, it doesn't matter what time frame it is, whether it's the Forex market, futures, stocks, it doesn't matter, okay? Just looking at this chart, if this was a chart that was in front of you, what would you do today? Would you be willing to buy this stock right now? And I want you guys to write this down. Would you be willing to write, uh, buy this stock right now? Would you be willing to sell this stock right now? Or would you say, you know what, I don't know anything, I'm just gonna like stay out of it. So I want you guys to take a few seconds to think about that. How many people are willing to buy this stock at this point right now? Because tomorrow is gonna determine whether or not you will make money or you won't make money, okay? So all those who are ready to go long, meaning that you're looking to buy this stock, all right, get ready. And all those who are willing to short it, thinking it's going to go further down or just get out and say, I, I don't want any part of this, I want you guys to make that decision right now. All right, so here we go. All right, for those of you guys who are going long, you probably are feeling a little bit good about yourself right now. All right, and how about that? What about now? What would you do? Think about it. What would you do now? All right, were you writing your decision or not? Let's go to the next day. What about now? How many people are still willing to buy this stock? How many people are willing to get out of this stock? Okay, what's your decision? Here's what's gonna happen the next day. Wow, how many people are feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm sick to my stomach right now. I've just lost everything. My money for my mortgage is already out the door. Now I have to go stand on the corner of the street and start begging for money. Okay. How many of you guys are like feeling good about this? All right. What about now? Who's interested in trying to buy this stock after all this stuff that is done? 
and this is what we got okay so this is what I mean by right side trading think about the emotions that you felt think about the thoughts process that went through your mind as you were going through step by step all right some of you guys who bought at that last green candle the very first green candle at the bottom um, over here you guys are probably looking okay yeah I'm making a lot of money so now the stock is back up to a resistance area who's interested in selling and who's interested in buying at this point okay what about now and look at what happened so this is what I talk about when I mean you know being able to see what was what anticipate what's going to happen on the right hand side of the chart all right now I put this quote up here because it says everybody's a genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid okay and this is Albert Einstein that said this and the reason why I share that is because <clears throat> when I first started I felt like I was being stupid okay how is it that every time I'm trying to do all this stuff that the professionals are teaching me and it's just not working okay I'm having a lot of problems and I started realizing that wait a second you know what maybe it's not necessarily professionals but just realizing that I am I have not figured out what my environment is and being able to do that helped me to see that you know what the trade like the pros do is right and it works for some people I have to figure out what worked for me all right because I was seeing multiple multiple you know ads and comments about you know 87 percent winning trades and how to get consistent results just like the pros but at the end of the day I did not have the tools and resources that the professionals had so if I didn't have the tools and resources that these professionals had then maybe I need to like start trading with what I have rather than what the professionals have have that I don't have access to okay and so hindsight trading it works 100 percent okay you would see them say if you bought where this yellow dotted line is right now see how much money you could have made and you had have had to get out up there well it's it's good to pick those spots in hindsight okay and it's okay yeah get out of your trade at that point in time and you know start shorting or or, or, or sell short on the stocks and, and make some good money on the way down and if you were to buy this over here at this point look at how much money you could have made but the problem of all this is it's always in hindsight so I came to the realization is like you know seeing all this stuff in hindsight made me feel like this cartoon that I've seen right here um, this guy right here his name is brother Junipa he was shooting targets at the wall and he was just hitting it dead on dead on and so the guy came out and asked him and said well, what are you doing you know because he said show me your skills he takes an arrow he shoots it on the wall and he, then he goes around and then he starts painting a target around that arrow and he said, well, what are you doing and without any embarrassment he said it's easy first I shoot my arrow and then I just put a target around it it works all the time I always hit the target and that's kind of how I felt when he came to this and when I approached some of the instructors that I was talking to at the time it was like well you know don't you see don't you not see it and all this stuff I say well it's not making any sense to me how are you able to figure this out in real time okay because I need to make money in real time and, and it reminded me of this story right here about the Emperor's new clothes where they created an invisible clothes that was a scam to the Emperor and touted it as if it was like you know, something magical okay and because the Emperor was so you know proud of himself and they want to look stupid he pretended as if he saw what he was looking at or what these guys were telling him even though it was all invisible okay and everybody around him could not bring themselves to say hey you know what we don't see this invisible clothes that you're talking about because they didn't want to be considered fools all right it took a four-year-old kid to finally say hey wait a second the emperor is not wearing any clothes and that's what I had to come to I came to that realization like wait a second you know what I don't see what you guys are talking about I do I just don't see it so I've seen people talk about volume and volume bands and pivot points and Fibonacci's and MACD's you know ADX all this stuff and it's like man every time I try to put that into my own practice I was just having the hardest time with it so I just said you know what away with all that stuff let's figure out what I can really do and then I came upon this strategy the vulture gap okay now the vulture gap the reason why we call this the vulture gap because this strategy has a lot of correlations to vultures all right you look at this picture and the first thing that you see is that the vulture is ugly okay and so we'll talk about that and just all these characteristics that the vulture has 
which literally you, you can find in the same thing where you find these types of trades. But before we go there, let's talk about what are gaps, okay? A gap is when you see price, you know, fall in, fall in, fall in, and then overnight, you will see like a big old space from the night before to the next morning. Basically, what all that means is that people were trading overnight uh, and the pre-market, and so by the time the next morning uh, market opened, the price was already far away from where it was the day before, okay? And so this is what a gap is, all right? So you see gaps like this right here. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's in the beginning of a gap and all that stuff. But what a vulture gap and what I call a vulture gap is basically what an exhaustion gap is, okay? And what it is is like the price has been going in a certain direction for quite some time, and then all of a sudden, after losing your shirt, losing your money, uh, feeling sick about the way the market is, da 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 you know, you get to a point where it's like you see the market even gap down even further, and it's like, okay, there's no end to this thing. Uh, this thing is never going to turn back again. But that's when things really start changing, and that's basically what a faulty gap is. So in this case, this is pretending as the price has been going down for quite some time, and then the next day, it gaps down in the same direction that the tr price has been going. That's what that exhaustion gap is right there, okay? It's going in the same direction that the trend was going in, and then, lo and behold, it starts reversing after that, okay? Same thing up here. You know, the price has been going up, going up, going up, and then in the same direction, after it gets exhausted, it turns around and falls down. All right, so here's an example of a stock and one of the things going to this whole uh, thing about vulture gaps is this, okay? We're looking at this chart right here, and on here I said don't think C, okay? Um, there's a rumor out there that, you know, vultures, when they see an animal that is about to die, you know, they start flying around in circles. And it's the chart right here, uh, the, the picture that you guys see right here. They start flying around in circles, okay, anticipating this this animal to die so they can come out there and eat it. All right. Now those are rumors. Some people say that's not true, but you know, let's just let's just pretend that that's exactly what it is. Because when I see a vulture gap like this, it literally alerts me to say, hey, wait a second, this trend is uh, is, is sick. It, it's because it, it's, it's been to the point where it's about to die. So now I need to start preparing myself, just like these vultures are flying around in circles, to see if I can go down there and get something to eat. But at the same time, to most people. This is an ugly sight, okay? It's very scary for most people. I mean, this stock has been tanking from $44 to like $40, and it doesn't seem like there's any, you know, chance of this thing reversing any, you know, any, at any time soon, okay? But this is where I get excited. I get excited when I see this because I say, hey, wait a second, I see something here. And that's one of the key things that we try to teach our students. I say, you know what? We don't think, and I mean, and when I say we don't think, I say, there are some words that we use when it comes to trading that I forbid my students use it. And one of those such words is think, okay? Um, I consider them curse words of trading now. And I tell my students, if you're a student of mine, you are not allowed to use those words ever again when it comes to trading. Because you hear a lot of people say, I think the stock is about to turn around, or I think the stock is going to go up, or I think the stock is going to go down. Well, you know, we're not thinking about anything. What we do is we see. Okay, I can see what this chart is doing. I don't have to think. I can see it. All right. Another word that we use as curse words is about six of them that we use. I'll just run through them real quickly. Another word that I tell people you're forbidden to use as a student of mine is the word feel. Okay. So people would say, oh, I feel that, you know, something is about to happen with this stock, or I feel that this is going to happen. I, f I feel that this stock is about to take off. Nah, there's nothing we can feel. I can't touch this chart. I can't touch that stock. There's nothing I'm feeling about it, okay? I remember when I first started, and I used to ask a lot of questions. And the things were like, well, you just have to have a feel for the market. And I was like, eh. I understand what they're trying to say, but at the end of the day, it's like, look, I keep it simple by just saying, what do I see? Another word is I wish. You hear a lot of people say that I wish this stock would do this, and I'm wishing this would do or I hope. You know, I hope this stock will do this. I hope, oh, I heard. I heard so and so and so say this. I was listening to so and so say this. You know, all those words are negative words, forbidden words, curse words that we do not allow our students to use. So if they can't use those words, what are the words that we expect them to use? Words like C, okay? And there's only three words that I would tell my students. If you can't use those three words, you should not be traded. And here it is. I see, I know, and I expect. Those are three words. 
okay, I see what the chart is doing. It's very obvious, okay, what the chart is doing. This is what I see. Once you see it, well, what do you know about what you just saw, okay? Because there are rules of certain things that you would see in the charts that would tell you, okay, based on what you see right here, these are the rules to follow. Once you know those rules, then you can expect the market to do what it needs to do. And if it's not doing the things that you expect it to do, based on what you know that it's supposed to do, then it's time for you to get out of it. So a good analogy, I was talking to my wife yesterday, and I said, you know what, it's like this. Being in a car, if I put a car in drive, okay, I know that the car is supposed to go forward. I expect the car to go forward, okay? But what if I put it in drive and the car actually starts going backwards, reversing, okay? That's not what it's supposed to do. So my expectation is that it's supposed to go forward. Now that it's going backwards and there's a cliff behind me, are you just going to sit there and say, well, let's wait and let me think about what's happening here? No, okay? It's like this car is not doing what it's supposed to do because I know that when I put it in drive, it needs to go forward, not backwards, okay? And so for that reason, I know that there's something wrong. And once I know that there's something wrong, I can take the appropriate actions, get out, try to figure out what's going on, or go get a, a new car and rather drive that car rather than the bad car. So same thing too with stocks. There should be no reason why we should be in a trade that is not doing what we expect it to do. But I think that what happens is a lot of people don't know what to expect. So because of that, they stay in. And then I hear them say, well, let's just stay in and, and I hope that it turns around. No, that's not trading. And I made those types of mistakes in the beginning, but now I've made it so simple it's just by seeing this. So here's a chart, and I won't even, I'll show you what the, the name of the stock is uh, in the next slide, but it doesn't matter who it is. The fact is, I'm looking at this chart right here, and I say, hmm, it's been going in a downtrend from $44 to $40. Everybody sees this, they're losing their money. Everybody's scared about this stock. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, okay? And then I see this gap right here which is the vulture gap. So in my mind, I already know, wow, here's an opportunity to trade this stock to the upside. So when everybody's afraid to get in, this is when I actually start getting in, okay? And it's just like a vulture too. When, you know, the food that everybody is not willing to eat, that's what the vulture comes down there and eats, okay? And so what do we see? This is a company called Lowe's, all right? In just five days after taking this trade, using options, because I, literally strictly only trade options, but we also talk about how to trade stocks too. If you were to trade a stock by itself, just the stock alone, five days later, you made 5% on that trade, okay? But by using options, we we're able to make 257% return on the money. Now, a lot of people say, oh, that can be done. And I've heard so many people say that anybody that's telling you that you can make this type of return is lying to you. I don't believe so. I mean, I, we have evidence, we have proof of this is actually what happens, okay? The next thing is, once again, here's a chart that is going down in the downtrend. This stock has been dropping from $78, and then it gets to $73, and it just drops again some more. Well, guess what? Now that you guys know what a vulture gap is supposed to do, what would you be doing? Are you bold enough to get in at this point in time, or are you not? Okay, if you understand the rules of vulture gaps, you know that, wait a second, this is a stock that is about to start going up. This is a stock that the trend is coming to an end, okay? And just like those vultures are circling in the air, they know that that animal's life is coming to an end. So they're just waiting for it to die and then swoop in and start eating. So it's the same thing right here, okay? And what do we have? This stock in 10 days. Now, mind you, this thing kept on going on for a while. Remember I said it, it signals the, the reversal of a trend, okay? We only stayed in for 10 days, made our profit, left. But this thing just kept on going on and on and on, right? And in the process, this was Microsoft. A lot of people love trading Microsoft, you know, made 59% on our, on our money in 10 days. This is another stock, another example, okay? The stock has been going down from $20 and dropping and dropping and dropping. And then here it is at $17, and then it drops even some more, okay? And the problem is a lot of people misunderstand, you know, what a vulture gap is, the exhaustion in the trade. And for that reason, they avoided. I remember the first time I even actually saw this, the guy who actually mentioned it did not, you know, he was looking at this and said, oh, wait, wait a second. When you see a stock that gaps down like this, get out, get out, get out, avoid it altogether. And that's what everybody tries to do. 
they try to avoid it because it's like, well, there's no end to this stock, okay? And the same thing, too, with, you know, vultures. You know, people are always trying to avoid whatever it is that these vultures are trying to eat. You know, you don't see too many animals trying to go out there and eat a dead animal, okay? But the vultures are the only ones there ready to clean everything up. And this is what happened. This is USO, oil, all right? Oil was so big just a few few months ago when oil was tanking and tanking and tanking, okay? And most people probably never even caught the bottom. You can go back till today and see that that stock has not come back down to this bottom that it is, all right? And like I said, it, it signals a reversal of the trend, all right? Getting into this in six days, walking away with 111%, all right? That's how good this strategy is. That's how effective this strategy is, all right? And like I said, you know, you have to have a strong stomach to, to, to be able to trade a trade like this, okay? Because when everybody, I mean, it's all over the news, people are screaming and like, you know, and, and all, the, all the bad news that you can hear about when it comes to the stock market and how it's, you know, a way to lose all your money, da 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 okay? It takes somebody with a strong gut, you know what I'm saying, to be able to stomach having to buy a stock like this when everybody do not want anything to do with this stock is making everybody feel sick. For you to then say, I'm going to come in and buy this stock when everybody's like, I'm out, okay? And that's what you will learn about this whole vulture strategy. Very, very highly effective strategy. You know, this is Sandisk. We stayed in 15 days, made 60% profit with everybody else to say, get out of the stock, okay? I want to show you guys, you know, this is real. You know, not just talking about something in the past and, you know, uh, how to trade strategy, but, you know, I actually send text messages to my students that subscribe with us, you know, and I give them a list of stocks that we're watching. And, you know, you can go over here and actually watch these stocks because, like I said, these are stocks that I actually send to my students of the stocks that either I'm watching or the ones that I'm trading, okay, so that they can learn as I'm teaching them, but at the same time, see everything play out in real time, okay. And so this is one that we sent out back in April, and we don't take too many trades every day. I mean, we're not day traders. Um, we, don't, we don't day trade at all. We are swing traders, meaning that we buy a stock one day, sell the next day, or within two months later. I mean, that's the longest that we ever hold on to a stock, okay? But we actually send out the text messages. This is what we're looking at. This is what we're trying to trade, da-da-da-da-da. If you go on here, you will see um, that there are, I mean, you can just go back. I mean, the date is right here, April 7th, you know. So start looking at from April 8th of 2015. You will see how the results came out, okay. All these were posted before the trade actually took place, okay. The text messages were sent out to everybody. So if you can see down here, it says Vulture Gaps, EVR, TRO, W, uh, GM, and all the airline stocks. I mean, all of these stocks were doing the same thing at a time where they were just showing vulture gas. And I say, hey, guys, these are stocks that I'm looking at. These are stocks that I'm looking into trading. And uh, a good portion of those, I entered the next day and started making money, okay? So here's, the, here's what we saw on that day. So EVR, going back, EVR was the first one. So I'll go through all these vulture gaps right here. I'm going to skip all these up, up here. These are not necessarily vulture gaps. These are like uh, some of them were, some of them were not. But these in particular are vulture gaps that we actually took, okay? So EVR, this is what we saw on April 7th, okay? EVR was dropping. It's been dropping from $53, and then now it's back down to $47. I mean, that's a huge, huge drop. I saw that. I said, guys, this is a vulture gap. This is a trade that we want to take. What happened? 11 days later, we walked away with 97% profit. I kid you not. This is real trades that we did, okay? The next one, TRO, okay? Same day. This is what we saw, the vulture gap, okay? Seven days later, walking away with 50% profit. I traded in the options. If you traded just the stocks, you would still walk away with 5%. Let me ask you guys this. Is 5% good enough for some of you guys to make if you were just trading in the stock? I remember a guy that I was talking to, he said, look, if I can get 5% in a month, I'll be happy, okay? We talk about in seven days, being able to trade these and be able to walk away with profit. And if you maximize it with options, you know, you even magnify your returns. 
GM. This is what we saw on that day, okay? This is exactly what the picture looked like on that day. I recommended it 10 days later, sold that for a 34% profit, okay? AAL, remember we mentioned that all the airline stocks? This is what we saw on that day, okay? So we got into AAL, 13 days later, sold it for 68% profit. This one, DAL, that's Delta Airlines. Same thing. The stock has been coming down in the downtrend, as you can see right here. And I, you know, you guys can go back and see just how all this stuff turned out. All right, coming in the downtrend is now at forty-eight dollars. Dropped six bucks to forty-two bucks. Actually, forty-one dollars was lower than it went. Okay, but it had that vulture gap. So as soon as we saw that, we knew, okay, this is time to like start getting into Delta Airlines. Thirteen days later. Walked away with 129%. Now, all these airline stocks are all in the same industry, but we were able to go in there and actually capitalize on all this stuff, okay? And that's what we teach people, and this is how simple it is, just seeing it, knowing what it's supposed to do, and then expecting it to do what it's supposed to do, okay? And anything else outside of that, we're out of there, okay? We're out of there. So we don't have to waste our time wondering or hoping that things would change. This is Southwest Airline. Same thing, all right? Came down, been dropping from like about 47, uh, 46 50 dropped down to about $41. Did a vulture gap at that point in time. Everybody was like, oh, man, we don't know where this market is going. Get out, get out, get out. I'm going to sit on the sidelines. I'm not going to do anything. And we're sitting down over there thinking, hmm, here's an opportunity to get into this market, okay? 13 days later, sold it for 34% profit, all right? And, guys, we've been doing this over and over and over and over again, all right? Alaska Air, another example, same thing. The price has been dropping from $69 all the way down to 62 bucks. Everybody's already panicking. We see that. We said, hey, it's time to get into Alaska Airlines. 14 days later, we up 68%. Okay, these are trades that we literally sent out two days ago. Okay, two days ago. Today is the ninth. If you can look right here, you see uh, May seven. All right, I scan my stocks at night. I don't. I don't. Like I said, I'm not a day trader, so I don't have to be in front of my computer every single day uh, from 9 a.m. in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, I spend a lot of time with my kid. You know, I take them out to the mall, go play at the playground. I mean, we, I, I spend most of my time doing that stuff. Now, of course, I also do teach my students, too. So if I'm not playing with my kids, I'm actually out there teaching my, my students. But as far as, like, sitting in front of the computer from 9 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, gone with those days. When I first started, I used to do that. And I tell you, for me, it just gave me a horrible, horrible headaches, okay? The emotions were flaring, you know, trying to figure out whether I should get in or get out. I was talking to a guy not too long ago. He was, I said, how did your day go today? He's a trader, too, and he's a day trader. I said, how did your day go today? He said, eh, it was okay. I put on 60 trades today. I said, well, how did you make out? Eh, you know, after commissions and everything, you know, walked away with a negative $31. And I just, I, I just couldn't help but shake my head. I was like, there's no way you'll find me doing that anymore. There's just no way, okay? I've done too much of that in the past, and I'm looking at this. It's like, you know what? He had to sit there from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock, Trading and trading and trading and trading, all for him to just lose $31 at the end of the day. I, to me, I'd rather just put on this trade, walk away two, three days later, a week later, two weeks later, three weeks later, come back, take my profit. So I encourage you guys to look at these stocks. I don't have the charts of these stocks because these are just all recent. But, you know, you can go back. I mean, literally, these are this, this is the text that I sent to my students. And I said, these are stocks that I'm trading, and we got into them. We got into ALK. We got into CCL. Um, <clears throat> we didn't get into PCRX or ROYL uh, or CELG or ZMH, but if you go back and look at every single one of these stocks, and I challenge you to do that this weekend after you're done with the, you know, with, with the webinar tonight, go check those stocks and see whether or not you know, these things work. Okay? Once again, I'm putting these trades on before it takes place, not in hindsight before it takes place. And every single one of the trades that I put on is now profitable, every single one of them. 
okay? So barring some kind of catastrophic drop in the market tomorrow or Monday, come Monday morning, I'm guaranteed to walk away with profit, all right? And how long did it take me to put this trade on? Not long, not long at all. I mean, I, I scan these things at night, and you can see again, if you look at the time right there, 9.32, okay? 9.32 at night, do a quick scan, find the trades, place them the next day. That's it, okay? It takes me no more than an hour to go through this. And for those students of mine who are, who are uh, subscribed to this, you know, if they want, they can still do their own scans. But then, like I said, I actually send out trades that I'm looking at that I myself am going to be trading because I would not send them anything that I'm not looking into and I'm not interested in trading myself, okay? So it didn't take, it didn't take that much work. It took me about like maybe an hour and a half, okay, scan through that. And I'm happy with the trades that I have on this and the other trades that I have on that. You know what? Come Monday, I don't have to trade even on Monday. I just monitor my trades and watch it keep on making this money, okay? Maybe hold it for like the rest of next week, depending on how the market turns out, all right? But I literally, once I place these trades, I sit down, sit back, let it collect my money. After I make my money off of it, then I start looking for new trades to start trading again, okay? Very simple lifestyle. Um, it, is, it, it, it can be done by anybody. You don't have to be professional. You don't have to be a genius to be able to do this. And, you know, this is, this is, this is what a vulture gap does for you. Okay, so let me talk about uh, what I'm offering here today. And basically what it is is a workshop where you can come for live class online, okay, on May 30th. All right, we'll start it at 11 o'clock in the morning. It'll go for like about two hours. The typical course uh, like this runs about $259, but uh, trust me, I'm going to give you guys a discount today. So, you know, just don't worry about the 259 But what I wanted to tell you about is what you would get from this workshop, okay? This is all about the vulture gap, all right? The first thing is, you know, I talked about the strategy. I just talked about I, I wanted you guys to see the potential of this strategy, all right? And I'm telling you, and it, knock on wood, but every single one I've done has not failed me, all right? Now, that's a bold statement to make, and people will say, oh, yeah, anybody that claims they have no loss is a lie. It's a liar, all right? I'm telling you that the ones that I've recommended have not failed me yet. Okay, I'm not saying it's never going to fail me, but it has not failed me yet, okay? That being said, we'll teach you how to manage your trades, all right? And that's part of the reason why it has not failed me yet, okay? Because even if it takes just one, two, three days before it reverses back, we're able to get in and capture whatever it is we need to. The smallest amount that I think I ever walked away with was 5%, okay? But that had to do with, because of the fact that I was able to manage the trade, all right, so they, I didn't say that it did not fail. What I am saying is because of the fact that I was able to manage my trade, I have not had a loss when it comes to these vulture gaps just yet. So we'll teach you how to do that. We'll teach you by helping you get set. You know, it's set basically is an acronym uh, for setting your stops, you know, figuring out what your entry is and what your targets are going to be, okay? And once you're able to do that, you will see. Now, remember the exercise I gave you guys in the beginning where I said, how much minimum do you want to make, okay? Now, this is one of the reasons why I said that, because I've seen it from many people who would say, hey, you know, especially people who are absolutely new to the stock market, have no idea what a bull market is from a bear market. You would hear them say, hey, look, if I can just make, you know, 5%, you know, I'm happy. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm not going to do this. And then they start trading, and they start making all this money, and it's like they start getting used to 30% and 40% and 60% and 100%. And then that minimum that they said, hey, you know what, if I can only get 5%, I'll be happy, they throw that out the window. And then the next thing you know is like, well, they made their 5%, but they're not taking their profit. They're not doing any adjustments to it. They leave it there because they want something bigger. Now the greed has stepped in, okay? And the same people that were like, oh, I'm going to be very cautious. Just show me how to make 5%. Now who know how to make 5%, become greedy and want more and they end up losing on their trades. So we'll show you how to manage your trades. Hopefully you don't get greedy and be able to put this in place. And the more disciplined you, disciplined you are to put this into place, the better you will be, okay? In that workshop, if this is something that you found like, wow, you know what, I want to learn more about this. In that workshop, one of the things that we will do to in increase the accuracy of these trades, show you which ones works and which one doesn't, is showing you what we call reversal locations, okay? 
that was one of the biggest things that I learned when it came to the stock market. You know, a lot of people say, oh, the market would reverse when you hit a support or when you hit a you know, resistance. Well, we've discovered 11 different areas where the market actually reverses. So we won't share all the level with you guys, but we will share a good number of that with you guys, okay, at this upcoming workshop. But if you become um, students of ours permanently, you eventually learn all the level. Knowing this information is so vital, so vital to understanding how this trade really works, okay? We'll be playing the vulture trade to the upside. If you notice, all the examples I gave you were, you know, stocks that was dropping, okay? I share that because that's the biggest fear that everybody has, is that the market is going to drop. People don't, when the market is going up forever, you know, people are all enthusiastic, excited, you know, but there's also a way to capture that to make sure that, you know, hey, wait a second, how do you know when the stock has reached its end and is about to turn around and start falling again? Wouldn't that be nice to know? Well, we'll talk about that when it comes to that workshop. We'll also add some indicators, okay? We don't use too much indicators, but there's a few indicators, very few. And I would say when it's very few, no more than three indicators max that we ever use in any one of our strategies. We have multiple strategies, but in any one of our strategies, we don't use more than like three, three indicators at the most, not, and, and not all at the same time, okay? Because one of the biggest things that I teach students is realizing that not every indicator works for every single strategy, okay? So just like a mechanic might know how to fix a tire, if he tries to apply the same tools that he used to fix the tire to now fix the alternate on the car, he would have some problems, okay? And unfortunately, so many people learn how to fix tires using the mecha uh, mechanic's mentality. They learn how to use a t uh, fix the tires and they know how to use a screwdriver and they want to use that same screwdriver to fix everything else on the car, okay? Are you going to have some success fixing some things with a screwdriver? Yes. But are you going to have problems with a lot of other stuff? Absolutely. So it's the same thing too with indicators, okay? You know, all these different indicators work well with certain types of stock than others. We'll show you how to know which one works for which. Magnifying your profits with option. I showed you examples of who were making 5%, 10% on a stock only to see, you know, 10 times that amount, you know, 15 times that amount on options. We'll talk about that, okay? Talk about how to use options to magnify your profits, which ones we use, how we pick the ones that we, we use to make the most money, okay? When is the best time to find these vulture gaps, okay? When is the best time to find these vulture gaps, all right? Every stock, like I said, has its own behavior, has its uh, own characteristics. So knowing when this is a good time to start looking for this type of uh, strategy is going to be very vital so you're not wasting your time trying to jump into every single stock, trying to see whether or not you should be trading this or should not be trading that. Okay, and we'll give you tons of examples to study from, all right? Oh, mind you, this whole class is going to be recorded, so you can take that back home, learn it, and all that kind of stuff, all right? And then we'll analyze real, real trades for the upcoming week, okay? Real trades that we are looking to take ourselves. We would analyze that right there in class so you guys can see exactly how we're going through the process and, you know, hopefully be able to use that to either train yourself to watch what happens the next week or the next uh, coming weeks, or maybe even take advantage of it, all right? So all you have to do is go to www.rightsidetraining.com to sign up, and you'll see that. If you do sign up, we'll give you these extra bonuses, all right? One, bonus number one, we'll give you the Alphabet of Trading ebook that I wrote, and basically I believe that trading has a language just like every other thing has a language. Learning to understand this language is going to help you communicate so much better so now you don't have to think, feel, wish, hope, and all that, all that kind of stuff. So you get that for signing up for this workshop. You get this bonus, um, number one. Bonus number two, 15 Amazing Stock Market Strategies, part one. I talked about how we have different um, uh, strategies out there. We will be touching on those. It's an audio CD that you can you guys can listen to and just see the vast amount of information and opportunities that the market gives you. We'll also give you another bonus, which is the market directional video. I'll be talking about market direction. Most people think the market only goes up, down, and sideways. Well, you will find out in that video that it actually does more than that, okay? We'll just leave it at that. Uh, market tools video. This is kind of going back to those uh, indicators that I was talking about. 
and being able to use the right tools for the right type of um, stock that you're looking at will give you that also. Now, for those who sign up today, now what I showed you before was if you just sign up for the workshop, so you know you have up to you know Monday to sign up for the workshop. But if you sign up today and today only, we will give you additional bonuses for signing up today. All right, and that's only for those who sign up today. Bonus number five, for those who sign up today, you'll get the amazing 15 Amazing Stock Market Strategies Part 2. In addition to what you got, the four previous bonuses, we'll give you real-life trading mistakes that I've made and how you can avoid them, as well as our favorite trading strategy, okay? So how much is this going to cost for this? $259. But like I said, if you sign up today and today only, okay, we'll give it to you for $26, okay? After that, there's a recurring monthly fee of $97, and what that does is you're able to come back every month as we analyze these trades. All these live trades that we, take, that we take, we go back and review them and pick the new ones for the next month. So you will constantly be learning to, to get better and better in identifying and trading these, um, these stocks. I'll leave you guys with this. Quick story about my student. I know I'm running out of time. He was a guy that actually went and started trading in the stock market by doing this. He would go to a company that he knows, wherever the company is, he'll go to their headquarters and look in the parking lot. And the more cars he sees, just like you see this picture, the better he thinks that that company is. That was his strategy, literally, he and his uncle. They would fly out to wherever the headquarters was and figure out how much money, uh, how much cars are out there. Well, he didn't do so well. I'm gonna leave you guys with this. This is the same guy after showing him this strategy, the things that he was able to do, okay? I know I've ran out of time. Thank you guys so much. Um, <clears throat> and I leave this one guy and only one guy because I want you to see it wasn't a one-time hit. This guy has been making this money over and over and over again. 92% up here, $1,600 there, $910, $5,000 in Christmas. Next week, $3,000. Then he writes me and saying, thanking me, and then, you know, DAL, and all these are real life texts that he sent to me. So guys, thank you so much for listening. If you feel like this is something that you guys can truly benefit from and you guys can learn something from it, sign up today, you'll get the additional bonuses. If not, you have up until Monday to sign up for $26 and you guys will still be able to come to the workshop. Well, thank you guys so much. Reed, I think I'm done.